Hi folks, welcome back to Yates Computer Tips and Reviews. So for this video, I've been wanting to get back to hardware. I've done a bunch of security. Those will be getting posted. Did a video on my first computer to parts. So from there, I have a few parts I wanted to go through. On this video, I wanted to talk about your CD-ROM, DVD drives, whatever unit you may have. This is usually a fairly easy unit to change out. You can check out the breakdown video so you can see how it was mounted in this unit, how it comes out. Usually there's just a couple screws on the side. It'll pull forward once you disconnect the cables. There's no locking mechanism or anything in this model. <clears throat> Depending on what kind of computer you have, some of them might slide back. Some of them nowadays have a little clip unit where they clip down. They may, uh, they're not this style. They are the laptop style. I know I have one here. Let me show you. Oh, no, I know. But it's the laptop style, the thinner drives. Those are becoming more and more in the newer systems. Um, just have to look at them, see how they're mounted. They're mounted differently than these. <clears throat> um, every make, every model, they're different. So you really want to look at those to see how they are. Most of them, there's a little clip. Some slide forward, some slide back depending on how it is. <clears throat> you have your USB style. These are important because this is part of security also. On the last video I just did on security, talks about what kind of drive is really important because this is your physical security to your data. Who can copy? Who can do what with this device? There was a lot of businesses that may not care who can copy, who can back up data, who can do what. server wise too. A lot of servers, if you buy the thinner models, do not have a CD-ROM or a DVD drive. You need the external to put in your OS, to put in whatever you need to do. Because you can't download the OS to a server because you need an OS to download. I know it's kind of silly to bring that up because I know most IT professionals know that. But for the home users, well, <coughs> that's an important factor. Maybe you have a laptop. A lot of laptops nowadays don't have CD-ROMs. They cut them out to make them thinner, have more room for other things and mainly for battery space and other things that's why i have this was actually for my laptop so when i do have to install software that comes on a cd-rom i have it but i'm not doing anything on there that i need that for <coughs> on a daily basis I'm not watching Blu-rays on it. I'm not watching DVDs on it. I'm not doing any of that type of stuff on that laptop. So I don't need that drive. So it made sense to do this. Not to mention I got a good price on it. So it worked out perfectly for me. These are some of the factors you might want to look at. Especially when you're buying your hardware. You're buying a new computer. <laughs> is what is actually in that computer to look at the specs to know one of the things you may want to do is say you are upgrading computers and accounting you have a policy procedures and an understanding and the best practice of accounting should not have any kind of a burner unit you know what kind of system you have in your accounting 
if accounting already has a DVD ROM or some other device that's not a burner, that's approved, that's okay for you to have, you buy those computers. If the other units are coming out, might be repurposed somewhere else, might need that burner, you can swap that unit from one computer to the other. I know a lot of people will be like, oh, but your warranty, your warranty. What's the truthfulness of you actually ever using your warranty? You know, there's a whole bunch of stuff going on about right to repair and all of this stuff. Worst thing is worse. If it burns out and it's under warranty, put the other drive back in, send it back. But I really haven't had that problem. Only problem I've ever had where I've had to use a warranty is I came in, tried to load the OS, tried to get it configured, and it crashed. It wouldn't work. The power's down. It does all kinds of weird stuff at the time of you installing and setting up on it. That got sent back. Once you get installed and you get all this stuff ready, get your user accounts in there, you get it locked down, get it secure, get all the data points in there, all the server access, everything you need to do on your domain, you know, local users, whatever you gotta do, that that unit is still running and you properly maintenance it and take care of it, odds are you're not gonna use that warranty. I know some businesses are really, really strict on warranty. <clears throat> like, oh, I bought this and it's got a 10-year warranty. Nobody can touch it. Nobody can do anything. If you're that way in a business or on a home user, then make sure you buy what you actually need. That is my recommendation. Because what the manufacturers are going to charge you for what you need is going to be probably much much more than if you went out and just bought what you needed and put in this is something i've been doing for a long long time doing simple things like that that's used to be how i used to help people as they would call me i need to upgrade my video card I need to do this. I need to do that. I want to put more memory in. I want to see, can I get faster memory? Can I do this? Can I do that? So this is where all of my past exist history was. I was doing parts, doing repairs, troubleshooting. Someone that went from the old OS where you couldn't upgrade to a new OS. Or even upgrading OS's, whatever it was, you know, simple things. Needed a new sound card used to be the biggest, biggest thing in the old days. Sound cards used to be a constant thing. And, you know, they used to be 40, 50, 60 bucks. And, but they would be huge improvements going from analog to digital to, what was it? The, surround sound 5.1 to you know now that Adobe digital there's all kinds of things with now you can put the ones to go to your tv with the fiber optic cables and all kinds of stuff this is constantly going on that's one of the factors i wanted to bring up too is your sound I know a lot of these things out there, you have all these gamers out there talking about their gaming, their video cards, all this stuff. <clears throat> but when it goes back to the motherboard, their sound is off the motherboard. Goes back to the factor of buying the better motherboards. You get the better sound. Well, at some time you might want to change that. The old... <coughs> old ones used to have a sound cable 
that would run from here to the sound card. Little interesting factors that used to be there. So that's why I go off onto the sound card issue from here. This isn't really relevant nowadays. Most of it's all digital. But if you don't know where you came from, you don't know where you're going to be next. <clears throat> Mentioned that a million times before. So I wanted to throw that in with this because those two units used to work together. Might be still a factor today. You might want to upgrade something. Now, like this one has the USB. Now everything is SATA. What the transfer rates are, all of this is a huge improvement compared to what these used to be. <clears throat> Honestly, I don't even know the highest sound quality you can get from a computer anymore. I know I had 5.1 on one of my computers that was just a killer system. Nowadays, it would be a home theater system that you can do. There are home theater setups you can do. From that, you can use Blu-rays. You can use all those different style drives to run movies. This is important to know what you have in your system. To know if you need it. I know it's really a legacy old technology. Nowadays you buy software, it's all digital, you download it. <coughs> How are you going to back that data up? Can you use a USB drive to back that data up? Well, one of the factors with USB drives is it can always be rewritten and overrided and erased. CD-ROMs, once you write to them, you close them out, that data is secure on that unless you actually damage the disk. It can't be taken off. <coughs> That's one of the major factors of backing up to a CD. I know it's legacy. I know it's old. I know a lot of people are going to be out there like, oh, why are you talking about that? Because it's an important factor for home users, especially. <clears throat> you know, you can't have 500 USBs laying around and know which ones are which. You might have mistakes and errors. You might delete something that you might actually need. You know, these are things that. I wanted to press with this set of videos so now that I'm gonna get back into hardware videos I hope I can get more people subscribing watching tell everybody all out there that I'm out here <sighs> mention I'll have a little short things on TikTok. so I hope this explains the CD-ROM DVD drives all of that type of stuff a little bit um, I know it's legacy, like I keep saying, but I think it's important people still know this because <clears throat> even though it's considered a legacy ancient, they still make the product. You can still use this product. It's just a matter of, of making sure you're aware, especially home users. You might not have this on your unit but it's always something you can plug in put with your data backup i mean truthfully how much are you going to use your data backup hopefully never but when that day comes you're going to be happy it's there when you do need it could be the same factor with this you don't know 40 50 bucks whatever these things are nowadays <clears throat> might help you out a lot especially if you watch my security videos when you read and you watch all of that and you read and study and do your homework on your data keeping your data safe this might be a factor you might consider adopting so 
I'm going to wrap this up. Wanted to point out that factor because I know it's not something that I ever really hear. A lot of people, they're in their computers, but now technology's kind of moved to a point where I have to address this USB version. I know for IT professionals, most of them have the USB version due to servers. Well, the server world is different than the home world, but the home world is getting to a point where they don't have these anymore. So wanted to press this because if you're not in the industry, you're not very aware of these. If you don't understand it, this is my video to tell you about it and to tell you to do your homework if you're interested. Look them up, figure out what you might want. You might want something complex, you might want something simple. There's a whole variable there. It's not one make, one model. Other thing is, is they still make USB floppy drives. Just to throw it out there. Another legacy, but I don't think anybody needs it or wants it, but wanted to pitch that out there. So, as a home user, I hope you're aware of that. Business users, I'm sure they're aware of it. If not, they are now. <laughs> So, alrighty, I'm going to wrap this one up. Thank you.